Hello and welcome! This character profile video is for the class, Kurenai! And what you'll see is all of her skills, the top 8 PvE and PvP skills that I recommend, her skill combos, enhancements, player card, and a gameplay video. So, without further ado, I am pleased to present the class, Kurenai! Here we go. And welcome to the skill slide. If you are new to my character profile videos, allow me to introduce the interface. On the left hand side are all of her skills. On the far right hand side are all the specials that go with those skills. And then the column next to skill, which is CD, that is the cooldown for each skill. Next to that is charges, which is how many times you can use that skill. And then hits is how many times that skill will hit a creature or opponent in the game world. And then damage-pve is the highest percentage damage that skill will do against a creature in the world. And damage-pvp is the highest percentage damage that skill will do against another player's character. And you have the passive, very massive, passive at the bottom. So. First thing I wanted to show you is that the reason why some skills are colored purple is because it connects to the passive of Crimson Eclipse Moonlight. So if you use those skills, then those things will happen and I wanted to point them out. And then Crimson Eclipse Shadow is just left black and then Unhealing Wound. I'll go into all the details of all that. I just wanted to explain the uh, different colors for the skills and then over in specials if you see that things are marked or colored in red it means at the bottom left corner that it's not applied in arena so if you go into the section of the game that is called arena these things won't happen but anywhere else outside of the arena like in the game world it will be fine it will work just fine so take a moment to look at everything here. When you're ready, we'll move on to the next slide, which is the top eight PVE skills that I recommend. Here we go. And welcome. What I've done is I've taken all the skills and I've organized them according to the column of damage-PVE with the highest percentage at the top all the way down to the lowest at the bottom. And Lunatic Discus is your highest damaging skill. So. Looking at this, I also want to show you that the reason why there's a block of skills colored in green is because we can only take eight skills into the game world at a time. And these are the ones that I'm recommending because they have the highest damage percentage. Now, please, this is a recommendation of getting used to these skills. Once you get used to what each one does and you get an idea of how you like to play please add the other ones like ninjutsu uh, concealment so you can uh, stealth around and fight creatures or other players and get that concealment in which would be awesome and then full moon when you're level 70 and you have the heal ability of full moon when you're farming or fighting monsters that are a little bit tougher than you that skill will help you greatly. So don't feel that you have to stick to just the green ones. Branch out and enjoy the other ones as well. So take a moment to look at everything here. And when you're ready, we'll move on to the next slide, which is the top eight PVP skills that I recommend. Here we go. And welcome. What I've done here is I've taken all the skills and I've organized them according to the column of damage-pvp with the highest percentage at the top all the way to the lowest at the bottom and lunatic discus continues to be your highest damaging skill. So what I wanted to say is uh, I'm always asked what skills can I use that have super armor that I don't have to worry about does it work in arena or not arena you know just I want to use those and I know that it'll work wherever I go and you have three the first one is uh, shadow stomp and that is the highest damaging uh, skill one and then 
The next one down, it's kind of weird. Uh, excuse me, it's kind of weird. I've never made this recommendation before, but it's a rear super armor that activates. So maybe, and that is Wheel of Wrath. So give it a try. Uh, we have icons now that show you when super armor is active. So eh, try it out. And the third one is Lethal Spin Spree. So those three, you can put them on your skill bar and use them, and it doesn't matter in Arena or the world, it'll work fine. So, aside from that, I do want to read about the passive, and then I have a video showing you what it looks like when those things are active, so you know what to look for. So let me just go ahead and cover the passive in detail. It's called Crimson Eclipse, and the description says, channel the moonlight energy to transform her body into darkness. And when you look to the right, Crimson Eclipse Moonlight. When your MP bar is 100 or more, so when it's full, using the skills Saw Spree of Sonan, Shadow Stomp, Lunar Dash, Moonstorm, or Ninjutsu Concealment consumes all the MP to apply the following effects for 90 seconds. Well, it's a 90 second cooldown, and that is your immune to decrease attack speed for 60 seconds. Another player would do this to you in a fight to try to slow you down, so you're immune to it. Immune to decrease move speed for 60 seconds. Again, uh, creatures don't do this to you, it's just fights with other players. They want to slow you down in movement and attack and just be able to capitalize on that advantage. And what it also does is it increases your attack speed plus 15% for 60 seconds and your move speed for 15% for 60 seconds. So what it's basically saying is when you use this and activate Crimson Eclipse Moonlight, you're immune to being slowed down and you're sped up you go faster you attack faster and move faster that's great especially for her so moving to the next one down it's called crimson eclipse shadow so you use three excuse me you use these skills three times for the effects below and the skills are delighted blast Chain Crash, Lethal Spin Spree, Wheel of Wrath, and Lunatic Discus. So as you can see, your highest damaging skill activates the shadow if you spam it three times. And those and the uh, effects are all your skill damage is increased by 15% for 15 seconds. So that Lunatic Discus on the third time you use it, whoo, it's going to hit harder. PvP damage taken is reduced by 15% for 15 seconds. So when you're out there fighting other players, you'll take less damage. And your evasion cooldown is reduced by one second. So you'll be able to get your evasion a lot quicker. And that's at the bottom right corner. You have a couple of them to dodge out of the way. So, this is really good stuff. But the last one for her passive is called Unhealing Wound. So, the way this works is it says to target on first hit of the skill. This occurs below. It's a 40 second cooldown. So, you're targeting a creature. Oh, excuse me. I caught myself again. I'm going to skip right to it. Unhealing Wound does 400 damage every second for 10 seconds. HP recovery uh, to the person you're attacking, minus 60%. So they heal a heck of a lot slower. It doesn't work in Arena. And that's the reason why I read this. 
not applied against monsters. So that means it works only against other players character. So when you are in, uh, in the world and you're battling like a guild versus guild or something uh, like that and you hit another player the first hit of any skill or a skill will trigger unhealing wound I wish I could show that to you in the video that just requires me to have two players and yeah I'd have to control them both sorry about that but at least you know what to do invite your buddy out in the world and say hey I want to check this I'm gonna hit you and then you'll look at your icons or your buffs and you'll see oh look unhealing wound uh, triggered but I think that would happen for them I think they would be the one to verify to you that they got unhealing wound I'm pretty sure that's what would be expected yeah so Let's go ahead and go to a video that I have ready so I can show you what these, what the passives do in action. So let me cue that up. Here we go. And welcome. So what I've done in the bottom right corner is the top four skills there connect to Crimson Eclipse Moonlight. It's not all of them. There's five, I believe. And then the bottom row is Crimson Eclipse Shadow. And again, that's not all of them. I think there is five as well. So what we're going to do is pick on those guys over there. And uh, let's clear out our status and skill buffs. As you can see, I just want everything to time out. And we're going to start with Crimson Eclipse Moonlight with these four down here. And the blue bar is your MP bar. As you can see, it is already full. So do the skill. And we come back and check our buffs, and there it is. Crimson Eclipse Moonlight for uh, the length of time that it shows, 60 seconds, and the cooldown. As you can see, the cooldown's a lot longer. So I was curious, could I extend that duration by using any of the other skills? So I'm going through them to see if any of them trigger and make it the... Uh, the effect longer and the answer is no once you trigger the buff it needs to play out and and finish up and then you can activate it again for another 60 seconds so as you can see no matter what I do Crimson Eclipse Moonlight is going to end but it's not a bad duration 60 seconds is a quite a good amount of time so we'll just let that uh, finish up. And what we're going to do now is show you Crimson Eclipse Shadow. And as you can see, it doesn't look like there was any graphical effect to let you know. So you kind of want to get used to the icons at the bottom above your health to just glance and see, okay, my buff is being active. And there it is. It is the second icon. Crimson Eclipse Shadow, that's what it looks like. And you don't get that one for very long. But again, you have to use three skills to trigger it. So, it yeah, it comes and goes. It is very powerful. All skill damage plus 15% for 15 seconds. Heck yeah. So in other words, the mindset is when you're fighting another player's character or even creatures, and you're counting out all the shadow skills that trigger the buff on the third one. One, two, bam, three. And the buff is active, and the next attack you do, which would be Lunatic Dis Discus, would hit pretty hard. So, it's a recommendation. Not telling you how to play. <laughs> Certainly not. But that is Crimson Eclipse Shadow. And again, I apologize, I can't show you Unhealing Wound. My best recommendation is to get a buddy, you both go out into the world, and you just start, just attack him once with one of your skills. It, according to this, it doesn't matter what skill it is, and then you have him or her tap on their buffs and tell you if they have 
unhealing wound as a negative on their side. So, without further ado, let's go back to the PvP slide. Here we go. And welcome back. So, now that you know how the passive works for Kerr and I, and what you're looking for, take a moment to look at everything here, and when you're ready, we'll move on to the next slide, which is the skill combo slide. Here we go. And welcome. So before I get into what you're looking at, allow me to tell you where to find it. So if you are on the main screen and you tap the menu and then you tap skills on the right hand side, now you're on the skills screen and then you look to the middle and go down a little bit, you'll see a little icon that says skill combos and you tap on that and it will open up a window that says list of skill combos. So what I've done is I've taken all that you would see and put it on one screen so you can visually view all your options. When you're looking at it in the game, you kind of need to scroll up and down and well, you can do that, but this is easier. You can print it out or have it on another monitor if you're playing on a PC and uh, just enjoy seeing it and trying out the combos on the other side. So. Now that you know where to find it, let me explain how this works. The skills that are in blue are what Pearl Abyss recommends you start with. And then the icon, which is a chain, it chains into the recommendations of the next skill you would do, which is in gray. So, for example, if you did the top left corner, Lethal Spin Spree, and you then did, uh, say, Reign of Steel, there is no blue skill called Reign of Steel, so that would end the combo, just from there to there. Now, I looked at this and I noticed there's a skill that you can do uh, all the time, it's uh, never ending, and that is Lethal Spin Spree to chain crash and when you look at chain crash below you can go back to lethal spin spree and keep going from one to the other and it never ends that is a really nice combo however you can be a little uh, creative and start out with something different and combo into that never ending thing Meaning, if you look to the right, where it says Lunatic Dis... Excuse me. Lunatic Discus. If you started with your highest damaging skill, and then did Lethal Spin Spree, and then go to Chain Crash, and then you're back to Lethal Spin Spree and Chain Crash, you know, continuously, until you feel like not doing it anymore. So you can start out with something different and go into that uh, repetitious combo on your opponent or creature. This is just ideas for you on how the list of skill combos section works. It is up to you to get familiar with all of them, all the skills, and play your way. So, take a moment to look at everything here, and when you're ready, we'll move on to the next slide called the Enhancements slide. Here we go. And welcome. I have certainly spent a long time trying to explain how the enhancements work for all my character profile videos and this time I think I'll try to do it a lot more condensed and shorter. But if you're new, let me explain the interface. On the left hand side is all of our skills, on the far right hand side is the branch damage connected to those skills, and in the center is four columns. The first one, going from left to right, the first one, second one, and fourth, I try to make things that benefit your character. And the third column are things that happen to the creature or player's character you are fighting. Things that happen to them when you use that uh, skill. So, the short version of this is as you play the game, you'll get skill books. They will be random, 
There's no place in the game where you go to farm to get skill books for a specific skill. It's always, always random. And as you get purple, green, and I don't think it's green. I think it's purple, and then it goes up to yellow, and you just keep going for yellow skill books. You'll build up all your skills, and it goes from level 1 to level 10. And you see this if you go onto the skill screen and you tap on one of the skills. So like, let's do uh, Saw Spree of Sonen. You tap on that, look to the left, and you'll see the icon for that skill in the center. And you'll see these circles around it. Those are your enhancements to that skill. Like um, adding things onto that skill already. And looking at it, you can build attack speed plus 5% for 10 seconds. Or you can increase the charges that uh, you can use that skill on. Instead of using it just once and wait for the cooldown, you could use it two times. And then the cooldown kicks in. But you need to unlock them. So if you're looking at that skill and you see a red number next to it, uh, excuse me, if you're looking at the skill and you see the enhancement and say charges change from 1 to 2 and you see a red number next to that one enhancement, that means you need skill books. You need to learn more skill books to get that uh, skill up to a specific level and then it, you pay some silver, it unlocks and now you have it. Every time you do Saw Spree of Sonan, your charges will now be two all the time. That's how it works. But where can I get these skill books? If you're in the game and you bring up the menu and you look over to one called Expedition Gateway, you tap on that, it'll say Expedition. You tap on it, the Expedition Gateway screen comes up and you see Ruins, Valor, or Pirate Island. It's the one in the middle called Valor. When you go into it and you do one of these things, which is basically you versus all the mobs for a length of time, but it eats up your desert water that you've collected. If you go in and you do it, you're, one of the rewards you get is Awakening Ascension Skillbook Chest. And those are the yellow skillbooks that you need to increase the levels of your skills to unlock all these enhancements. And the last thing I'll say is you truly don't know how powerful your character will be, any of them, until you unlock all these enhancements and then you say, sit down and say, wow, this character is much more powerful and stronger and can do much more like bleeding or slowing your opponent down or increasing the number of targets that you hit if you're farming you know you you can spread out with Sorette and hit more people and one more your character will become twice as strong when you unlock all these enhancements so take a moment to look at everything here and when you're ready we'll move on to the next slide which is called the player card here we go and welcome so what you're looking at is the combination of all the slides you previously saw all together on one slide and you can print this out be kind if it's not your printer because it's a lot of colors but uh it is like a baseball card it is meant for you to look at this and be able to compare it versus other characters and in all my character profile videos I have a player card so you can print it out and put it up and see which ones that you like to try and which ones are stronger than others that's what so many people do so let me go through what you're looking at at the top is all the top 8 PvE and PvP skills that I recommend to the right of that is something new. It's called immobilization. Anytime that a player's character or I don't think the creatures do it. I think it's just when you're fighting another player's character. They have the option to knock you down, stun you, 
uh, knock you in the air, knock you back, whatever. They're immobilizing you, and you need to spend time and animation to get up, be ready to engage in the fight again. So what you're looking at is all the skills that are green have an immobilization. And I believe Pearl Abyss does this really well. Try to balance out what a character has. And as fast as Kurenai is, and as deadly as she is, and as, you know, all the things that she can do, and all the buffs that she has, something has to balance her out, and it's here. Where a lot of characters have a lot of immobilizations, like two, some have maybe three, she just has one. But they didn't strip it all away, they gave her a good amount of... Uh, skills that do have an immobilization but it's just one and if you're wondering well, what the heck are you talking about let's take saw spree of sonan at the top and look down where it says skills and look at the skill all the way over to the right where it says specials knock back on hit so if you and i were sparring and you did this skill on me you're gonna knock me back it's gonna take me a moment to recover from that and you're immobilizing me you're literally having me do something to get back into the fight and the more of these you can do on me the more of an advantage you'll have in our fight you'll just be dominating because you're just knocking me down you're stunning me you're just literally but there's something I can do and I'll get to that at the bottom of the player card so that's what the immobilization section is. You already know about the skills section and we just covered the enhancements. So what I'd like to do now is if you weren't aware of what um, forward guard or super armor is, let me explain. Forward guard, this is what this means is that incoming damage to you will either be zero or heavily reduced. So if you and I are sparring and you're attacking me straight on and I have a skill or an enhancement, uh, actually she does, she does have a skill. Yeah, right there, Wheel of Wrath. It has forward guards. So if I do Wheel of Wrath on you and you're trying to hit me, my forward guard is active. So no matter what you hit me with, dead on the damage will either be zero or heavily reduced and that's how that works super armor this is what a lot of people who love pvp they're all into this and this means that incoming damage will be reduced and the effects that immobilize you like stun knockdown freeze etc will not happen for a duration of time this is why when you get into a fight with another player the first thing you want to do on them is a skill that activates your super armor and for you shadow stomp is one of those skills you'll see the icon for super armor and that means that their ability to knock you down or get the you know the advantage on you uh not gonna happen until the duration of the super armor runs out they need to pay attention and that's why they're going to keep doing skills that have immobilizations on you to get that one shot that they can knock you down and when they do that could turn the tide of the battle very much so so take a moment to look at everything here and when you're ready we'll move on to a gameplay video where we show you what Kerr and I can do here we go and welcome so before we get started let us show you where we're at we're over here in Balanos, and we are at kron castle entrance and well we're here because we love it here their cp is 2519 and ours is a measly 36031 <laughs> i think she'll be fine so the way that this works is we will tap on here We'll use this auto path that we created. She will fight for about mm, two minutes, maybe a minute and a half, at which time we'll go to town and I'll give my outro. So without further ado, I am pleased to present to you the class, Kurenai. 
Here we go. And it's just about time for us to head back to town. There we go. So while the loading screen comes up, let me just say thank you. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like the videos on this channel, please like, subscribe, let people know I am always making more videos and there are always more videos left to do. So what we're doing here is we're gonna go ahead and uh, put Kurinai in a pose, swing the camera around so she has a nice backdrop and zoom in a bit and let's just see what it looks like when she waves hello and also when she claps it's it's a thing it's what i do <laughs> that's cool <laughs> and let's see what it looks like when she claps oh very cool that's nice too so I'll just do that one or two more times and while that happens let me just say once again thank you. Thank you very much for watching this video. You have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye now.